All right, let's get started. Uh, let's get started by a little bit introduction about, about myself. My name is Janet, also known as JD. Uh, that is my alias on Discord. And I am an OSIC student mentor. And number three, I've been assist assisting students towards completion of their pen to wonder journey. So just a little bit brief about myself um, right there. So not going to bore you guys with that. So now let's talk about the introduction of the live session. So we will be exploring the post-fish machi post machine of proving grounds practice, just like I mentioned. And we're going to be encountering a variety of services like SSH, SMTP, HTTP, POP3, and IMAP. And number three, what we're going to do is we're going to be using multiple tools for each step. And we're going to be minimizing reliance on a single tool itself. So just going to be discussing how the same thing can be done using different tools. And at the end, we have an exciting contest where I will be posing three questions and whoever answers the question first, they are going to have a chance to win a free Proven Ground subscription. So if that's clear, let's move on and let's go right into it to the walkthrough. So I have started this machine already on Firefox in this portal and I have also connected to my VPN file right here, as you guys can see. So I'm just going to shut down this terminal, but this VPN is just going to keep running. So don't worry, guys. So yeah, so I'm just going to shut down that terminal and I'm going to be copying this IP address and we can just go to my current directory and I can just do make their end map. And I'm going to be using my favorite tool, which is Rustcan. But before I do all this, I'm just going to be opening notes.txt using Sublime, which is my favorite text editor. So we're just going to do cancel on that and just going to zoom it. So this is the postfish IP. And I can note down my Kali IP, which is my Team Zero IP. And now we can get started with our usual enumeration. And now I'm going to shut down my webcam so that we can focus only on the screen in front of us. So I'm going to see you guys at the end of the walkthrough. So now I'm going to be using my favorite port scanning tool, which is Rascan, uh, because it is known for its speed. So I can just do dash A. Okay, I just realized that I did it on my own machine. So I can just copy the IP address of Postfish instead. And now, as you can see that it is suggesting us to increase the U limit because it can impact Rust and speed. So we can just add this. We can just take the suggestion and increase the U limit which I believe speeds up the process. And as you guys can see how fast the scan is. And I can just do EOF to open ports. And that's how open ports look like. And now I can just use the cut command to cut the first row, which is this one, and I can use delimiter to separate both these uh, this by using this delimiter which will give me the post itself so as you guys can see I now have it in a row but now we can what we can do is replace a new line with a comma and we can do a narrow down scan using nmap because instead of doing dash p dash which will take a lot of time what I just did is that, is that I just scanned for the open ports and it gave me uh, all the open ports and now I can just save my time and be efficient. So I can just use SC, which is strip scan. I can do SV, which is version scan. And I can save this output in file called postbase. And I can mention the IP address of Postfish. 
So let's wait for that to finish. It shouldn't take a lot of time. Okay, that was really quick. And um, we now have the results. And uh, we can see that it is also giving us postfish.off, which is the domain domain name of this uh, machine. So I can just So now I can just uh, go through this NMF scan again and find which codes are of interest to me. So we have SM, we have SSH, we have SMTP, and we have HTTP. So I'm just gonna go ahead by enumerating as HTTP first because that's just how I do my enumeration because most of the time it is always through HTTP. And right off the bat, it redirects us to this domain name, which is postfish.off. So now what we need to do is update this entry so that my host file can point this IP address to this domain name. And for that, I can just save this entry under the custom tag. And I can just mention the IP address, which we have for postfish and just save this. And now if I press F5, which is refresh, I think it should be good to go, but I should probably remove S because this is HTTP, not HTTPS. So continue to HTTP side. And we have this web page. So if we take a look, we have nothing, but we have no information here. This is just a template which has been pasted down here. And same goes for this. So we don't really have any information, but, but, but if we take a look at this tab, which is our team, I can guess that we're gonna find some usernames because this is going to be disclosing some names of the team members. So let's check. We have all these team members listed and these are the potential usernames for us, for, for us to try and see. Now in SMTP guys, we can actually uh, do some validation of these usernames and see if they are valid. Let me show you how. So first of all, we can just note down the usernames. So let's just note the name of Claire Madison. We can just note Mike Ross, Brian Moore, and Sarah Lorem. And I'm just gonna remove the space and gonna put some dots because the usernames are not uh, created with a space in between. Instead, usually it's created with a dot. And also what I can do is use uh, format these username on first on short name basis. So m dot Ross and b dot Moore and s dot Lauren. And let's take these usernames and we can do sudo win users.txt or actually we can just use subline users.txt. Just gonna do cancel and I can just do control plus S and it will save it. And these are users.txt and in in order to enumerate the valid usernames, what I'm gonna do is be using this utility, which is SMTP user enum. And if I press enter, it's going to show me some examples of this tool. So we can simply just use any of the methods. Now this is an SMTP method, which is verify. This stands for received. And uh, I'm not sure what this stands for, but most of the time verify and received, they help in uh, verification of the valid usernames. So we can simply use this command, which we are given in the examples, and we can just put our users of txt. And right here, we can just uh, drop the IP address of postfish. 
So it says Mike Dodros exists, Claire Dot Madison exists, and all these usernames they exist. So in order to verify, I can simply connect to the pop three port, and we can do this using ten. So we can just connect to port 110. And now we can just verify if this username is valid. So it says, OK. And let's see if maybe the password could be the same. So that is authentication error. So maybe we should be using some 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 other usernames, maybe. So maybe I can just also use the HR as a username and ID and sales and legal because these could be the usernames as well. And I can just note them down here, which is sales, HR, IT, and legal. So I'm just going to be noting these down and see if I can use any default password with these usernames, because I don't think we are going to be finding any default passwords for these. But there could be a chance if you can, if there is a default password, maybe uh, the sysadmin, they use the same password as a username. So I'm just going to try it out and see what works. So I'm just going to do use, uh, user legal, for example. And then I can do pass legal. I can just zoom this in, in case. So this is authentication error. Now I can do the same for HR and pass HR. And it again says authentication failed. Now let's try sales and let's try the same technique. Let's see if we are lucky and maybe we can just get a hit. Okay, so seems like we are lucky. And the fifth admin, he chose a default password, which is the same password as a username and that is a rookie mistake. So what we can do next is basically use this FMTP, uh, this uh, IMAP command, which is list. And this is going to show us the inbox. And as we can see, it says one message. So we have one message which we can read. And similarly, we can just read this message using REPR. And we can just mention the CL tag of the message, which is one. And this is just going to be telling us the uh, message which we have in, in our inbox. Now, as you can see, uh, this message says that they will be sending out password reset links in the upcoming week so we can get you registered on the ERP system regards ID. So we have SMTP access and we can send messages using IT because we are now logged in into the SMTP and now we can send emails impersonating anyone. So maybe we can just do it uh, using uh, IT, uh, using the uh, sender's email as IT and we can just send a reset link to all the IP or to all the email addresses in the organization and see if we get a hit. So we can just go right ahead and uh, we can just do return path, which is so we can just quit this, and now we can just use send mail or we can use socks. 
So let's just see how we can use socks uh, for sending out an email. So I'm just gonna do help. And as we can see, we have some examples listed down here. So we can just do from, and we can just do to. And let's see if we can find a way on how to send uh, messages to multiple email addresses. So, Uh, I can just do socks and two as it was written in the manual page. And maybe I can just create a new file which is called emails.txt and we can do a bash loop. So right here, we can just uh, note down sales at the rate post bash dot OFS. We can do it at the rate postfish.ofs. We can do legal at the rate postfish.ofs. And we can do HR at the rate postfish.ofs. And we can just use these email addresses for now and see if we get a hit. So I'm just going to be doing two. And I can just do cat emails.txt and I can just replace a new line using a comma. So what this basically does, if I just do it right here, so this basically what it does is that it separates all these email addresses using a comma. And I think I did like a small mistake. All right, so that should be good to go. And now I can just resume sending this email to doing the same way. So I can just do this and I can just do from, which is id at the rate postfish.ofx. And maybe I can just delete the, the email address of id because that's the sender address. So I can just do from, and I can just do this tag, which is header, which is the subject. And subject is password reset link. And I can just add this flag or body in which the text will go. So I can just now say, hey team, as discuss in our previous email, reset your password. at HTTP and I can just enter my own email address, uh, my own IP, which is the TuneView IP. And right here, what I can do is basically listen. If I get some connection, maybe a user hits this uh, link. And so let's see if we are lucky and it says that postfish.offset connection unknown. All right, that is weird. So I have already mentioned, maybe I can just add server, which is the postfish IP. Although it should have worked, but it's okay. So, 
this is our body this is the text and hopefully someone should connect if we are lucky and if they connect we should see a hit down here so let's wait and see if we are lucky so i don't think we are going to going to be receiving any connection because if there was an automation, we should have received something. So now I guess we can add some more emails, which is and I can also add these ones as well at the rate post page dot off. So I can just copy paste there all across. And hopefully I have not made any spelling mistakes. And now if I send this email again, let's see if we are lucky. And now it, as, as you can see, it is sending to all these emails. So this got rejected because this is not a valid email address. So, but this got accepted because this is a valid email address. So let's see if we are lucky and if we get any connection whatsoever. All right, so I guess we are lucky. And now I can just, this this looks, this looks string looks like a URL in code. And I can just simply go right ahead and do URL in code slash decode. And I can just do, I can first of all zoom in and I can just decode, but it seems like this is, I don't know why it's not working, but maybe you can just choose something else and it should. Okay, this is for encoding. So we can just do decode and we can just press decode. And I can just, copy the decoded string and I can just paste it down right here. And as you guys can see, we have a password and we can actually use this password to maybe SFH as, and seems like the connection which we got was from Brian.Moore. So, Let's maybe try to SSH and I just got logged out of Twitch so I cannot read any text messages just as that guy. Sorry for that. Okay, so just gonna give you a little bit summary. So what we just did is basically uh discovered uh, open services, which is SMTP and IMAP. And we found a web application where we found some usernames and we tried those usernames against SMTP and found some valid usernames. And when we tried default credentials, we were able to log in to SMTP. And just a sec. And after we logged into SMTP, we are able to send emails to internal email uh, addresses and we sent a link for password reset to our own Kali IP and we got a hit and we got a pass we got some creds so that's what we just did till now so just a quick summary for those who join late and now we have this password so it's Brian 
dot more and the password is in it eternal sunshine so let's see if maybe we can ssh post this dot off and i can just do yes and i can just do or i can just do ssh path and ssh brian dot more at the end postpage.ofs and we are in so we are in as brian.more seems like brian he took the bait and because of his negligence we were able to uh, get his password so this is basically how phishing works and how uh, we can sometimes take leverage of some default credentials. And this is basically the risk behind keeping these default credentials. Um, and this is how basically we can get access and we can access the inbox of the internal organization. And now we have uh, a session as brian.moore. So, I'm just gonna go ahead with my usual enumeration. So I can just go ahead. But before I go ahead with this, I would like to show you guys on how we can on how we can send emails using Telnet as well without using Fox. So let's find out how we can use uh, Telnet. So we can just also use Telnet and I can just go ahead with authenticating as sales first. So this is just a quick recap for those who joined late. So we are logged in. And now basically we can just do list and I can just do RETR1. And this is how we basically read the inbox messages. And now what we, we basically can do is receive two. We can just mention the IP address of brian.more, but I believe this is incorrect. Maybe we can just do it using netcat. So user sales and pass sales. And now we can just, uh, as I just showed you guys, we can simply read the messages and Now I can just do mail from. Okay, this is also showing as incorrect. So, okay, I see what I'm doing wrong. I am basically connecting to port 110, but this is the SMTP port. So I can just use Telnet instead. Uh, that was a really uh, stupid error from my side. But in here, we don't really need to authenticate, it seems like. So I can just do mail from, and I can just do received RCTP, which is the recipient. And I can just do brian.moore at the postfish.ofs. And I can just open NetKit again for listening. So this is just to show you guys how we, we shouldn't be reliant on a single tool and we can use multiple ways to achieve the same task. So now we can just do data and we can do subject, which is password reset. And I can just do one more space. 
And now I can just write a professional email so that it looks a bit realistic. So now I can just type anything, but it should be like really professional and convincing. But it seems like it is still going on. Uh, he has this, he is keeps keeps clicking on the same email again and again. So I'm just going to write a professional email and see how we can convince Brian more. So, <clears throat> so I can just say hello. I can just do. Okay, I'm just going to cancel it because it is not letting me go backspace. I'm just going to redo the steps. So seems like we cannot go backspace. So once again, we can just do mail from, which is IT at the rate. And we can just choose recipe and address, which we want. Okay, RCPT2, which is brian.more at the rate, postwitch.ofs. And it says, okay. And now similarly, we can just do data and it says we have to end data with a dot so once we are done we can just uh, uh, add a dot and it would end the data and data is nothing but the body so now we can just do subject password reset and now we can just do hello team hope Everybody is having a good shift till now. As discussed in our previous email chain, please reset your password using the below password reset link and let us know if you face any issues while resetting your password. Now we can just simply do the IP address of our Kelly. And now we can just do regards, or maybe we can just do best regards ID. And now we can just press enter and just do a dot, and this will end up the data. And as it says, it just queued the queued the email. So it just sent the email out. And as before, we should get uh, a hit right here once again. So I can just do quit. So this is another way on how we can do this phishing. And as you guys can see, this is a bit more professional and it really sounds more convincing as compared to the previous email that we sent using uh, Swags. But I think, okay, we got this. Uh, seems like Brian got even more convinced now. So Brian is an innocent guy, I would say. And <laughs> he can just copy paste the, uh, we can just now go ahead with the privilege escalation and so this is what we should do if we are doing it realistically in a real life penetration test. Always keep the body really professional and uh, so that it really means that it's coming from the IT department. And now we are logged in as brian.more. We have our local.txt uh, file and we can just do ID 
And ID actually lists the group memberships. So we are part of the group mail and filter. And if we do groups command, it will also show us the group membership separately. So we are part of Brian Moore, which is a user itself. We are the part of the mail group. And Brian Moore is a group member of the filter group. Now, as soon as uh, what my method what my methodology is whenever I see an unusual group membership is that I simply enumerate the uh, the permissions of the specific group. So let me show you guys on how we can do that. So we can just find all the uh, files which are owned by the group filter and see if we can find any interesting file which can help us with a privilege escalation. So let's just do our enumeration. And once I do this command, we see that this group filter, it owns this file. Now, if I do ls.la, it will see, it will show us that root and filter. So root can actually read and write and the filter can also read, write, and execute. I mean, sorry, the root can also read, write, and execute, and the filter group can also read, write, and execute. So seems like we can write to this file. We can uh, put something inside this file. And let's just confirm the same. We can just do, we can just add maybe a custom and see if it saves our changes. And looks like we can uh, write to this file. And now we have to figure out if we can uh, maybe somehow uh, use this file to our benefit. So I'm just gonna read some questions on the chat. So there's this interesting question, which is, is the IT department using Telnet to communicate with their users in real life. So not really, they're not using Telnet. They can be using, they are actually using some uh, GUI tools like we have uh, Thunderbird, we have Ab Evolution, and most of all in a professional environment, they are also using Gmail uh, as their, uh, which is the Gmail business, um, plan to handle their email communications. But since this is a test environment, we have just been setting up SMTP. So in real life, they probably won't be using uh, SMTP. They are going to be probably going to be reliant on services like Gmail. Uh, but this is just to demonstrate on how default credentials can be of risk and how we can use default credentials to log in and send emails within the organization. So I hope that answered the question. And that was a good question, by the way. So thanks for putting that up. Now, let's come back to this disclaimer file. Now, I'm not really sure what to do here. So my best friend here is Google. So I can just do disclaimer postfix because I believe we have been running the postfix uh, service. So we are actually using postfix and we can also confirm the same if we uh, come to postfix.nmap. So it should show that we are using postfix SMTP. So we are using the uh, SMTP by postfix. So maybe we can do a Google search with, which is disclaimer file for postfix and see if we can find anything interesting. So we have these two links and maybe we can just go through these links and try to understand what needs to be done here. Now, in this blog, I've already been through this blog and this blog basically talks about the fact on how uh, disclaimer files are 
used whenever an email is sent. And quite honestly, this blog explains it much more perfectly. So, so just a sec. So yeah, let's just go right ahead and understand what is a disclaimer file. So, so disclaimer file seems like, let, let's just Google what is a disclaimer file for post-its. Let's just try to understand what is a disclaimer file. And then we can just go right ahead. So I believe they also explain what is a disclaimer file in the same so disclaimer file is basically a script which is used for which is used with an email and i think it does sort of an automation or something so as we can see it basically executes some commands and uh it uh and if we if we check uh the contents of this disclaimer file Let's just check the contents of the disclaimer file right here. So le let me just try and see on how I can explain this much better. So if you go, go to the disclaimer file, we can see that uh, disclaimer addresses. So seems like this contains the addresses. So let's see what it is. So this contains the email addresses. So first of all, it creates this variable for the email addresses, and then it creates some exit codes. And it sort of uh, does an automation. So it obtains something from these addresses. And then it basically sends an automated email or uh, using all to mine and Basically, whenever we send we send an email, uh, the disclaimer file gets executed. So maybe we can just confirm the same on how we can. So in order to confirm whether disclaimer file is getting executed or not, we can use this tool called uh, PS5, which is available on GitHub. So PS5 basically monitors all the cron jobs uh, and all the hidden processes, which we can uh, monitor without uh, being root at the same time. So we can just download this file and we can just save this file. And and we can see if this file got downloaded. So PS5. And most probably this should be an L file. So I'm just gonna do SSH pass dash P. And I'm just going to transfer this. Uh, I'm just going to transfer PSPI onto the box. So I'm just going to do brian.moore at the rate postage.ofs. Oops. What I meant to do is basically the SCP command. And we can just do SCP. And I can just mention the target directory. So this is what, what SAP is going to do is basically copy this directory under the temp. Now, most probably this should have worked and it did because I have not used PS5 for a long time. So I was a bit, uh, I was a bit confused for the syntax, but it seems like I've got it still. So PS5. And now I can just 
use PSPY, first of all, let's just make it executable. So PSPY and now I should be able to run PSPY and okay, that was unexpected, but it, in the end, it did give us an output. So I can just open one more terminal. So once I uh, did the SSH command, it showed me that I did the SSH command. So this is how basically PSPy works. It showed me in the real time that I, uh, that someone SSH'd into the box. And now what our goal is to, is to basically confirm if the disclaimer file is getting executed once we send an email. So let me just do the same thing and I can just do socks and it doesn't really matter. So I, I can just use any IP address, which is sales at the rate postfish.ofs. And so this is the PS5 window and this is the Swox window. Now, once I run this Swox command, it gives me some output. And as we saw on the blog, the blog basically mentioned that disclaimer file is added once the email is sent. Now, I just wanted to confirm on how it behaved once I sent the email. And as we can see, if we uh, give some attention to this file, this, this line right here, it is actually uh, executing disclaimer file once I sent off an email. And that's basically what the blog was saying that, hey, if disclaimer file is used for adding some functionalities to an email, and we can also write to this directory. So now we can basically, probably we can just go right ahead and maybe we can just add a reverse shell. So I can just choose an appropriate shell from refshells.com, but I remember the reverse shell in my memory, so I'm just gonna type it down by myself. So dev.tcp, dev slash tcp. And I'm just gonna paste my tally IP address. Dev tcp and the port, which is 80, which is where we want to receive the shell and zero is greater than N1. So, I can just save the changes and I can just do yes. And let us let me confirm if these changes are saved. So it seems like it is because we can read to this uh, file because of our group membership in the filter group. And I can now basically do the swap command once again. And on the side, I can just open a listener. So because of the fact that the disclaimer file got executed, once we sent an email, we got a reverse shell. So this is the part which I love the most about this box, uh, the privilege escalation. And this was something really unique uh, which Giselle did in his creations. And that's why this machine is one of my favorites from Proving Grounds Practice because it requires a lot of research. And now I can just upgrade the shell. So I'm just gonna do by three import PTY, PTY.spawn, then bash, and control plus Z, I can do SCTT, SCT, SCT wire raw dash echo, FG, enter, enter. And I can just do export term is equal to X term so that I can clear the window. And I can also adjust the rows and columns. 
and now we are good to go. So now we are logged in as the filter group itself. So maybe we can see if we can go have the root directory active, but I don't think so. And we have nothing. Maybe we can check some local files and directories, any unusual ones, or maybe any permissions to any of these. User directories. So this is empty and I can just check the directory of my graphs. This is also empty, nothing to find there. Same with sales. And we have Sarah. Let's just check because we don't want to leave any stones unturned. So same with this. So we do not have anything interesting. Maybe we can find something under op. Nothing there. We can find the temp, but nothing there as well. Maybe we can find anything under the web directory. Wow, the dub, dub. So this is something new, which is called bait. And nothing there as well. And maybe we can just check HTML because we just want to be spot on with our enumeration. So nothing to be found here, but maybe I can just uh, check if we have any sudo as entry because this is a usual enumeration. And seems like we do have something, which is basically that the user filter they can run a uh, mail uh, without any password. So whenever I found any sudo entry with this, any of the utility, what I always do is go to GDF or bins and I can just open this directory of GTF or bins and I can just search for mail. And it seems like uh, GTF or bins have an entry for mail uh, utility. And seems like we can actually escalate our privileges using this simple syntax, which is sudo exec uh, bin uh, slash sh, but I'm just gonna do bash and we are root. So <laughs> that was it uh, for, the, uh, for this machine and this was basically uh, the privilege escalation, but it, as you guys saw, it requires a lot of research. And I can just go to the home directory and we have the proof.txt and it seems like we have disclaimer.sh. So this is basically an automation job which was left behind by the author for um, the cleanup. So in case if anyone overrides this file, this uh, automation will basically replace disclaimer with a fresh disclaimer file. And there also another automation which we can check, which is uh, done by uh, the author as well, which is basically uh, the cron job in which Brian basically uh, views the email address and the data gets sent. So this is also another cron job that they did. So just to show you guys how um, the bot is created and how the interaction works in the back end. And now let's uh, discuss about the contest at the end, which we have. Now let's talk about the contest. So the first question which we have for the contest and thanks uh, Salty Cracker, appreciate it. But please uh, do not leave guys because we have a contest and 
whoever answers the question first, they will get a chance to win a free Proving Ground subscription. So how it's going to go is that I'm going to be posing some questions and you guys have to uh, you guys have to basically answer the uh, answer by giving it on the chat. So let's just go right ahead and let's go with the first question. So remember guys, you have to post the answer on the chat. And my colleague who is um, monitoring the chat, he's going to see who answers the question first. And whoever answers the question first, they're going to win a free Proving Ground subscription. Uh, so uh, it's going to be PG Prax subscription in specific, not the play one, because the PG Prax, uh, the Proving Grounds play is actually free. So we are going to gift you guys, we are going to award you guys a Proving Grounds practice subscription. So let's start with the first question. So are you guys ready for the contest? Can you just uh, post uh, that you, just drop that we are ready on the chat. And once you guys post, I, I can just get started. Just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, so the contest is that you guys are gonna see a question and whoever answers the question first, they're going to be winning a Proving Grounds practice subscription. So just give me a thumbs up on the chat and I'm just going to go right ahead. All right, let's start with the first question. So the first question is, if Brian was not in the filter group, but the sales user was in the filter group, how would you proceed? So considering we cannot SSH to the machine using sales, So just read the question carefully and try to understand the question and then post your answer on the chat. And anybody who posts the correct uh, the correct answer, they are going to win a Proving Ground subscription for free. So just to give you guys a little bit of hint, uh, we cannot SSH to the machine using sales. So how else we can uh, get the shell of sales without SSH? So just paste the answer on the chat. Uh, if you post the command. All right, we have, we have, we have a correct answer by Kenny. So Kenny, you, uh, you just won the proving ground subscription. So I'm, you're just gonna get a DM from our community manager and she is going to ask you for your OS ID and you can win, you are going to win a free proving ground through PG Prac subscription. So congratulations, Kenny. Now, on to the next question. So the next question is, what measures can be taken to prevent attacker from gaining initial access to the machine? So what can we do to prevent the initial access to the box? This, is, this question is more about the mitigation. So Yep, that's correct. But since Knuckleberry has a learn one subscription, I believe we can award this to Captain Salt Cracker if it's okay with you, Knuckleberry. <laughs> All right, you also have a learn one, learn unlimited. <laughs> All right. And the last question is, this is more like an explanation that 
why it is not possible to log into the machine using sales user credentials, even though credentials were valid for other services. So what do you uh, guys think, what could be the reason behind uh, us not able to SSH as sales? No, it is an OS account. That's why it is valid on SMTP. So this is a bit tricky. Maybe it could be related to the SSH config. No, that's not quite correct. No, he can log in, but uh, there's some feature of SSH which is restricting them to log in. I'm, I'm talking about only SSH. Yep, they are an SSH user. Um, keep trying, guys, keep trying. Okay, let, let me just try to demonstrate. Maybe you guys get an idea. So let's just try to uh, force this dot off. So you guys see the difference. So we can only log in uh, at SSH using the public key. So that's the correct answer. But uh, so do you have a learn unlimited subscription as well, uh, Fubaton? If not, then we can award you the subscription of Proving Grounds practice. All right, that's, that's just awesome. If you can pass on to someone, that would be amazing, so. I guess we can conclude this contest. So the answer to this question is basically the fact that sales uh, can only authenticate to SSH using public key, but he cannot authenticate to SSH using a plain text password. So that is the answer to this question. So I guess we can uh, reward uh, the PG Proving Grounds uh, subscription to Kenny and Fubaton and uh, and uh, Knuckleberry. So if you guys uh, do have a, a unlimited subscription, you can just pass it along to someone else of your choice, any of your friends. They will remember you forever. And that's it, guys. Um, that's it for this session. So just going to forward the names to the community manager who is going to reward you the free subscriptions. And that's it for the session, guys. Thanks for joining in. I really appreciate you guys for joining in and taking your time for this and see you guys next week. Um, and have a nice weekend tomorrow, guys. See ya. And thanks again for joining in. Tata, goodbye and cheers.